Petrofac. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I've been given the task to talk about digital transformation on the oil field, but after the um, presentation yesterday from His Excellency um, Sultan Al Jaber, I wanted to take a different approach. I'm going to talk about the journey itself. So, with regards, this is actually the digital maturity curve by the by industry. And the first thing you can observe is the fact that oil and gas is at the lower end of the spectrum, okay? It's not a bad thing, okay? It's just the fact that all of the industries above, they're basically um, driven by consumerization. So you have the volume, obviously you have demand, and hence the technology itself is driven to its boundaries much, much quicker. Oil and gas is actually more of a traditional uh, organization, so it's sort of a bubble. But with regards to this, companies are starting their digital transformations. We heard yesterday that Adnoc are starting their 4.0. Um, Petrofac, we've started our digital transformation mid last year. So we'll just give a bit of few insights. So I'm not going to talk about the technology, surprisingly. Uh, we've been, they've been discussed through the whole time uh, of this, of this uh, forum. So digital twins, uh, robotics, AI. Um, blockchain. Um, we're going to focus more on the fundamentals. So when companies start digital transformation, the key, co the key question is where do you start? And that's a, that's a million dollar question. I mean, there is no right or wrong answer. But the key thing that any company needs to do is they need to fix the basics. Okay? So when we look at this, you need a strong pl platform for your digital transformation to launch. So typically what we say here is you need to invest in your infrastructure, your security, your governance frameworks, your security frameworks to make sure they're equipped for future development. And at the same time, you have to start to think from now about your application landscapes. Because most oil and gas companies still operate in silos and they still have heavy legacy systems. So you, we need to start looking forward and looking at cloud, uh, software as a service, and other agile uh, tool sets. And the, uh, the, other, the other key uh, point here is the fact that this is a business-driven strategy. It's not technology, it's not IT. So you need to make sure you get 100% commitment from your leadership, and it comes from the top, the board, the CEO, that this is coming and there is a reason for it. So business ready, technical ready. So, I believe there are three digital pillars. Um, they are about culture, it's about productivity, and it's about the customer. So, when we talk about culture here, we're dealing with people. So, you know, it has to be handled very, very carefully. Um, change management is crucial. There needs to be a lot of communication. You know, why, you know, where we are, why we're doing this, and how is it going to impact the organization and the workforce as well? Because there will be impacts. And the second point here is that already a lot of organizations have a form of innovation, most probably in the organization. What I would suggest here is have one that focuses on digital, because the whole point of this is bringing out idealization uh, from the organization. It's bringing out the people's ideas, and some of the simplest ideas can be some of the most impactful. And then the final thing here is about education. So on education, it's an opportunity to upskill your staff. The current uh, applications you have in your company, I mean, we've gone, as an example, we went, we're on, on Microsoft, but we have some very powerful digital tools that we don't really use. So some of them, for example, are your SharePoint, Power BI, um, and Teams. So for collaboration, mainly around collaboration and analytics, which is the future. Uh, the second point is on productivity. So, at the end of the day, why are we doing this? This is all about optimization, okay? Um, it's doing things smarter, faster, uh, ad with agile, and at the most um, uh, cost-conscious uh, perspective, you know? So, uh, there's, a, there's a concept here we say about digital thread, and it's very, very important, and I'm going to try to explain it in about 20 seconds. So digital thread is basically the key that links or interconnects all your systems as an organization. That today is practically non-existent, I can tell you that. But that's the, that's the vision. That's what every company should be striving for. 
And the reason for that is that you have seamless integration from your ERP through to any subsystem that looks after your customers. Okay? And at the same time, it drives a single source of truth that tackles your big data issues of today. And the final thing on productivity, you know, when you start this journey, start to show quick wins rapidly. You know, there's things that, again, we're doing at Petrofact that really have demonstrated this. We're using something called RPA, which is Robotic Process Automation. It's a newer technology. It's basically bots that are on machines. They, they uh, tackle very tedious manual tasks. And at the same time, they're using machine learning. So they can do um, user case scenarios. And that's something that eliminates quite a lot of administration work. So that's just the start. It just shows the value. The other one is about data science. So using data that you have, again, we were talking about a lot of data in companies. That's true. For example, in our case, we're using supply chain management just to, just to showcase how, if you use data correctly, the insights you can get are extremely valuable. So it's a taste of things to come. The final thing here is on the customer. So about the customer, we've been hearing this constantly through this forum as well, is about collaboration. It's all about collaboration. We need to create an environment where suppliers, customers, partners come together and really think about ideas. And these are industrial issues, by the way. They're not uh, the, the industry's issues, that, and potentially regional, but potentially global. So we're, you know, we're in the lovely city of Abu Dhabi. And I've already made my contacts with Adnoc. I've already made my contacts with Amazda. So I'm going to bring in Etisalat, and we're going to get either at, we're going to go to Adnoc's Innovation Center or potentially Etisalat's. We're going to sit together. We're going to start that. So maybe next year we can have a discussion about that. So really, what we're doing here is we're shaping the organization. We're shifting towards optimization, and then we're sharing in the ecosystem of the industry. So I just want to show a user case we'll be doing. We have a product called Pretrolytics. Um, we've just created it, and it was based on the feedback from the ecosystem. We're an we're a, we're a, um, EPC uh, company, and we're also an oil field services company. So one of uh, our customers in the North Sea, uh, they were very keen to get more insights, quicker insights, and also, at the same time, maximum, um, um, maximum um, availability. So what we've done, we haven't changed anything. We just thought, what we, do we have? We have IoT. We have data. Um, you know, we, ha we started to play with uh, AI. We've started to play with machine learning. What we've done is we've transferred our domain knowledge in advanced algorithms to come up with um, a predictive analytics platform that allows us to, today on major outages, gives us 10 days before an outage happens on average. That, that's changing our culture as a company because it's making us much more proactive than reactive. Okay? So again, just one little example. Digital transformation key takeaways. I wouldn't do my job if I can't let everyone in this room take a few little things away. So basically, again, you're dealing with people, so change man management is critical. Collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. I can't say it enough. You know, I think a couple of people have been saying more heads are better than one. That's absolutely true. And at the same time, a big issue that I've, I've been in oil and gas for about six months, very short period of time, but one thing I've, I've noticed is that the youth in the organizations, it's not, not, not like the previous institutions I've been at in the industries. So, you know, and I know all the Generation X and the millennials, they want to go to the Googles and, you know, all the other companies like the advanced companies, Facebooks. We need to make oil and gas sexy again, okay? And... You know, this, this, is, uh, this is very, very uh, important for oil and gas because we keep telling about big data and data. But the problem here is that it, Gartner has put some prediction on by 2022, the youngsters coming up, the Generation X and Millennials coming into the workplace, they will have the skills as the data scientists I have in my organization today, which are very, very few and far in the world to, to get quality ones. They're going to come out of institutions, and that's not their main, that's not their main domain. Okay? So that's going to tackle the big data issues of the future. And at the same time, the mature staff we have in the organization are critical because they have the domain experts. You put those two uh, demographics together and you've got a very powerful solution already in place. So when we talk about digital, uh, digital transformation, it is a fad. Okay? And 
the way to think about this really is about the continuous next. Why? Because this is a, an evolution. Someone was just saying on the presentation before, it's about the transformation takes time. It's the same thing with digital transformation. You're not going to get it in one or two or three years. When you've done your full transformation, it could be five, ten years, right? But at least you're driving to something and, you're, and you know, it's, 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 it's a journey. So the last three things I'm going to leave you with is three words that you can take away, and that is shape, shift, and share. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, everybody.